We've already shown you the Volvo X30 as the twin engine performance with 428 horsepower and shared our impressions with you. And in that video, we promised to show you, so to speak, the base model as well. This is the rear wheel drive with 200 kilo, 272 horsepower. And then there are two battery sizes, the standard range and the extended range. We have it as the extended range variant and want to give you a detailed look at the car, both inside and out once again, and not in the higher priced ultra trim this particular time, but rather in the more affordable mid-level plus trim option. You'll of course find out what all this means in this video too. And then of course we want to make the big driving report and find out for you if the upgrade to the performance is worth it, or if perhaps the RWD with the standard battery or larger battery might suffice. I would say let's not waste any time. You guys please check it out. Whether you're part of the Charge Electric community, we'd appreciate it if you support us with a subscription. Then, you definitely shouldn't miss the next video, featuring energy consumption, detailed charging check, and optimal travel comfort. I'd say let's kick off with the Volvo X30. Um, and as always, we start from the outside, start from the front. Let's take a slightly closer look at the front of the Volvo EX30. After all, it's based on a purely electric platform. Volvo is part of the Geely group, you know, and on the same platform, they're also building the Smart Hashtag 1 and Smart Hashtag 3. And the Secret X as well, of course. So essentially, you basically have the third counterpart right here. But in my opinion, it might even be the most exciting vehicle of the three. We have it in a very, very beautiful vapor gray metallic here. It's somewhat like a light medium gray metallic color, which sort of reminds me of the shade chalk at Porsche and the Alpine gray found at Mercedes. So it looks not white and not dark gray, but somehow like light gray. Somehow an exciting color. We have here lovely Thor's hammer, or as I affectionately call it, tomahawk. I always end up thinking of a nice steak with LED headlights. Beautifully done. Here we have air curtains to channel the air around the front wheels as efficiently as possible. Everything is neatly and securely sealed since, as previously mentioned, it's exclusively an electric vehicle. In this configuration, where we have it as a single engine with extended range, a larger battery, it comes standard with 19-inch wheels. We received it over here as a press demonstration vehicle, also with 19-inch and 245 R19 tires. Actually, quite a sleek rim with such a closed design. It's all about aerodynamics too. It's supposed to have a WLTP consumption of 17 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. Let's see if we can achieve that. We'll determine that later in the driving report with you. Yes, with the plus equipment, there's always this beautifully painted black metallic roof included. And with the base model, it's just painted in the color of the car. And with the ultra equipment, you even get a glass roof. Our test subject here doesn't possess that. Also, some very nice shiny black mirrors. Everything's designed stylishly. A bit of plastic down below, hard plastic, but I think it's not bad. And it's made from recycled material. Volvo is consciously making the deliberate choice to utilize many, many recycled materials, of course, aiming to significantly enhance and improve its ecological footprint significantly. It fits perfectly with electric mobility, which I find very, very good. The cream of the crop for me is the rear end, beautifully done with these LEDs. That wrap all the way around here, even reaching into the taillight design, I must say, it's an absolute bombshell. Nice little rear lip spoiler, quite nicely subtle, because with Volvo you don't have this aggressive presence, but always quite nicely understated and calm. There's no shark fin, given that Volvo seamlessly blends it into the car's body, mirrors and the windows. We have a rear wiper to clean the back window, that's necessary too. We specifically went to Shell for you, but we're not getting paid for this ad and wanted to show you, is it our application error that the window didn't get clean? Is it because of the rear spoiler on the Volvo? What could be the reason? Feel free to write it down in the comments. Other than that, very discreetly Volvo at the back and where the button is later for the tailgate, dear Stefan will tell you that. Let's move on to the technical details. Compact SUV is, I believe, the correct term. We have here 4 meters 23 in length, 1 meter 84 in width plus mirrors, standing at a height of 155. For comparison, I am 1 meter 85 tall and it has a wheelbase of 2 meters 65. Usually the battery pack is integrated within that wheelbase. Here we have the extended range version with 69 kilowatt hours gross, 64 kilowatt hours usable and net extractable. It's rear wheel drive, meaning here on the rear axle is the permanent magnet synchronous motor. 
which then propels the rear axle accordingly with 200 kilo dot of 272 horsepower 343 newton meters of torque and it's supposed to accelerate from zero to 100 in just over five seconds stefan will manually time it hand clocked of course to check for you later and at the top end, typical for Volvo, it's capped at 180 km h. Feel free to share in the comments whether you think that's good or bad, or maybe it's fitting for the vehicle. Did you possibly forget something else? What could it be then? How about the charging port, maybe? Take a look how neatly the X30 fits into the C-pillar. That's quite a nice story, isn't it? Yes, it is indeed very neatly and carefully done. Right, I unfortunately completely missed the charging port. Apologies, there we do have the option to charge at AC with three-phase current at 11 kilobars. That's always the case with every single model, except if you opt for the ultra version, then you'll certainly have three-phase up to 22 kilobars at the corresponding charging station if it's secured with 32 amps. DC we have here with the extended range as well as with the performance variant up to 150 kilos at peak and we want to see during the consumption drive and the charging test whether it actually achieves that if we might even break the record again with Volvo and if it will charge from 10 to 80 percent in the stated 28 minutes. And then people always seem to get so emotionally worked up in the comments rightly or wrongly and that's of course solely and completely for you to decide about the frunk. I find the frunk to be quite practical, really, if one is supposed to have it. Do we have it, Stefan? Yes, we do, because then you can simply store your charging cable in the frunk during lousy weather and not mix it when it gets dirty with the clean luggage in the trunk, the rear cargo space. They go ahead and thoroughly mix all up. Here, Volvo has creatively crafted a unique frunk. I guess that's enough for a standard Type 2 charging cable. Seems fair to me, too. You can also throw in those very muddy running sneakers and... and, 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 and I just find it convenient, but of course you'll judge it as you see fit. Yes, we don't have a disguise here now, but we probably won't need one because the rear engine is in the back, not in the front. And otherwise there's probably a bit of climate tech, charging tech, because that's what the devil installs. Wiper fluid is refilled here, but we'll definitely take a look. Sounds like it could be a Volvo hood perhaps, right? Mm, three, two, one, uh, pretty solid, huh? Sure enough, it is far more captivating than the front trunk is the large rear trunk or the spacious boot at the back. And of course, firstly, we need to carefully ascertain where exactly the release button could possibly be located. Not here. Look, now the backup camera, Stefan, yes, you're completely off track too. Oh, really? Because the expert knows, right? By the way, with the Ultra Package, you also have a 360-degree mm -hmm. camera, right? The expert knows, Stefan, don't always be a know-it-all. Open the trunk. You know how it works. Look, just right above the L, there's a small, tiny dot. Cool. Look, it's electric. So from the plus equipment level, you'll also get the electric tailgate. The base model doesn't have that. It's up to you to decide, do you need it or not? I just find it absolutely convenient because when you're out and about roaming with full pockets and all that extra stuff, it's just super undeniably handy. Yeah, what I also appreciate is that there isn't a flimsy parcel shelf here, but rather something solid where you can even place a jacket or an item on it. And by the way, that's where the cargo triangle is integrated. And then you've got, believe it or not, in this compact SUV, 318 liters of storage volume. One might say that's a lot. Another might say it's not much. I think it's sufficient. Also nicely equipped with a double loading floor, which includes a large compartment where you can store things like the Type 2 charging cable as shown here. However, it can also be removed if you find yourself in need of more trunk depth, particularly when it comes to the aspect of loading heavier or bulkier items. The downside is if you remove it, as you can see from the bulge at the back, you won't have a flat loading surface. Let's put it back in before there are any misunderstandings and someone says, hey, he doesn't have a flat tailgate, which he actually does. And then, Stefan, you have the option, the choice, to unlock 40% on the driver's side and 60% on the passenger's side, actually. And when you have the seats all the way back, then they just won't tip over. But we can resolve that issue. Um, and then it's over 900 liters of storage capacity. And I'd say that's definitely enough space for the mother-in-law, right? Definitely. What Volvo did cleverly too is adding a small description at the back. Like with heights and dimensions and such, which shows what all can fit in there. So you can see quite a bit back to the floor lamp or even a golf bag. That's actually a pretty good benchmark, right? It's definitely clever. And for those who find the 318 liters or just over 900 liters insufficient, Stefan, what opens electrically closes electrically, they of course still have the option to install a roof rack. Then perhaps to drive with a roof box, maybe carrying a load of up to 75 kilograms. And you can also get an optional trailer hitch. Regardless of the model, it costs around 1,000 euros, I believe, from what I've seen in the configurator. 
For the rear wheel drive version equipped with the standard engine one ton and for the extended range just like we have plus also for the performance model featuring all wheel drive 1.6 tons. For such a compact SUV the 423 is really quite decent right? That's a really comfortable figure, so you could theoretically tow a small camper or even a little sports boat with that horse trailer, a small horse trailer or even garden waste. So an X30 isn't just a secondary car, not just a family hauler, but really an everyday vehicle, right? Quite the versatile all-rounder, huh? I'd say we've shown you everything on the outside. Let's proceed inside now. As always, we will do the glass check. Single pane glazing, as far as I'm aware, there's no double glazing either, so two panes connected with the film, then optionally available for selection, not even with the Ultra. But it might not actually be necessary since it might not even belong to that class of vehicle. That's more a feature you'd find in the upper middle class, luxury class, reserved for premium cars maybe. Yes, indeed, Volvo is now also going down this innovative recycled route for the interiors as well, you see. One may feel conflicted about it. Is it high quality plastic or recycled materials or could it be plaster precisely? At the very end, you'll have to be the one to judge that, not even us. What I really fancy though is the design. So we have this plastic here, which is slightly soft and it foams. It's also crucial for all the elbow users who might rest their elbow there while driving. Then we've got this really cool structure here. It's also made of recycled material. Then here with this handle extension, I find it quite stylish, even if it's made of plastic. Looks very high quality. We have here once again the recycled material. In such a structure, um, I believe it's perfectly okay. And here we have a padded armrest, which maybe could have been just a bit more padded. Yes, there's always something to criticize, isn't there? Here we have a nice fabric inside. But what I'm missing here is, you know, some kind of carpet or a plastic, because indeed you can clearly see how it rustles and rattles quite noticeably. Of course, we'll perform the comprehensive cobblestone check with you later on to see how it sounds. Now let's check the door again to hear its closing sound. Ah. Welcome to the interior of the Volvo X30, where it's all about simplicity, but still perhaps it's fully equipped with all the essential functions via an array of buttons and tactile keys. Let's take a closer look at what exactly this means. First off, we have a really, really nice large window area supported by the steering wheel, which is flattened at the top and bottom. This means I have a very, very good view, especially important in city settings. Imagine like Berlin's main traffic with cyclists, pedestrians, here you can keep a very, very nice overview to the left and right. Where the overview gets a bit lost is because we only have this central vertical control unit where the dashboard is located up here as well with no additional displays. This means we don't have a head-up display, perhaps not common in this vehicle class. And we don't have a driver's display either. This means in principle I always have to look away from my line of sight. Proceed straight ahead and take a brief glance at the center to read the speed and to check the battery status. And especially in the dark during those long night drives after having thoroughly tested this car for a couple of extended weeks, I must honestly say I kind of really miss it quite a bit. This could well be just my own personal opinion, but please feel free to write down in the comments what you think. Here we have the continuous monitoring of the eyes and the car also always checks meticulously if we are actually paying close attention. On the left, we have the controls for the adaptive cruise control, steering assist, lane keeping assist, uh, speed, etc. And on the right, we have a very tactilely pleasant operator axis for the infotainment system, volume up down, music skipping, and also manual operation of the voice control. This vertical display is truly fantastic. It conceals the Google Automotive system, which we've presented to you in many ways, and of course also includes the superior navigation via Google Maps, complete with routes and charging planning. I'll show you again later. Um, Besides, we have the next evolution from the Volvo C40 XC40, where we now also have YouTube on board. This means during charging breaks, you can watch the latest Drive Electric episode or one from another YouTuber, and you're able to integrate certain apps from the Google Play Store directly into the vehicle. I also find the menu unit here very, very nicely done, where you have light control and so on. The only thing I personally don't like much is the mirror adjustment because I like to use it on the right mirror, not constantly through the reverse gear. Someone mentioned that in the inaugural Volvo video. Hey, you can simply tilt a mirror down using the reverse gear. No, I want to do it manually because when I back into my garage, I don't need to look at the wheels, but I want to see if I can make it through the garage. And sometimes with the existing backup camera, which we'll show you later, it might be um, uh, suboptimal 
But that's also a personal thing. Feel free to write in the comments how you see it. Otherwise, you've got a nice settings layer here, well done, where you can, for instance, control the ambient lighting in the plus package uh, and so on and so forth. Everything is simple. Everything is self-explanatory. Just as we've grown accustomed to from an American mobile phone manufacturer, all app-based, I must say, is a solid A, constantly being upgraded, which I think is great. In the front, which we forgot to mention, under the window is the soundbar. With a Harman Kardon sound system, this means we also have a subwoofer and rear speakers in the back. I'm really quite eager to see what your reaction will be when you hear the sound. I'm quite impressed indeed. Yes, the glove compartment is operated with a button here, revealing a nice space where you can store a few items. Also, it seems to be missing some felt or carpet lining inside for when you put things in there. It might possibly also create a bit of a rattle and rustle. Over here on the right, by the way, we don't have a glove compartment. I find it a bit disappointing because it might be a bit of wasted space where you could have stowed a few things. What we certainly do have, without any doubt, is a wonderful wireless charging feature on the left side. Initially, my first review of the performance made me think it was right too. Unfortunately, it's not. I deeply wished that it had the capability to charge two separate devices at the exact same time, particularly when I was spending some quality time with a very dear friend. My brain bag fits right here in the center console. I'll show you later. What's brilliant is this pullout with two cup holders. Meaning when you need them, you just slide them out. You can also slide out just one. I think that's smart. Right here in the middle, we have the window controls and the control um, for unlocking the doors. For the rear windows, you press the rear button. Um, it probably saves the manufacturer some cabling in the door and door panel too. I can actually live with that, you know? I mean, I do find that pretty smart. Wouldn't it be absolutely awesome if we just had a small, convenient control panel for the mirror right here? Wouldn't it be remarkable? That would be great. You wouldn't always have to do it through the display. Exactly, we've got a center armrest here that can't be opened. Here is a tray, and perhaps it might have been padded just a bit softer underneath, you know? This particular item is made of plastic, appears quite chic, yet it's somewhat hard. Throughout the passing of time, even with the presence of the armrest, I truly would have significantly appreciated a little additional comfort cushion. Looking through the passenger door always gives away a bit about the seats, and I must say, Volvo remains a true premium manufacturer in that aspect. We've got a leather-free interior here, some kind of faux leather, plastic, but it feels good. I've experienced no thermal issues when sitting, which I find very, very good. We have proper support in the lumbar area regarding lateral support, also in the thigh area. We've got these light shoulder pads, and here we have the color Pine, P-I-N-E. I find it quite nice. It's a green. Green is becoming more fashionable these days. I've chosen dark green for my dining chairs now, Stefan. Yes, I must say it is indeed a beautiful color. It's also Cute. considered the color of hope, isn't it? The hope for a truly magnificent electric car proudly presented to you right here. Yes, then we have the brain pouch. We mustn't forget that. And the interior noise meter for the driving report where we have this nice large compartment here where the lady's handbag fits where my brain pouch fits and where we also have a second level, which I find quite chic, where we can store a few more things, but that too is again made of hard plastic. Here I would have liked perhaps a little bit of rubber maybe so it doesn't rustle and rattle when something is inside here. Well, but if need be, you could maybe carve it out yourself from a piece of plastic from the hardware store, right? Yes, that would theoretically be possible too. Here in the premium trim, we have a lovely black roof lining. I've always had a preference for black. However, if you're specifically wanting a sunroof, then that particular feature comes included with the ultra trim package. 6'1", 220 pounds, and proudly boasting a highly compact electric USB port. How precisely does that work? It truly works quite well. Let's now proceed to do the back seat test. The passenger seat is adjusted to the B pillar as usual. The entry here is naturally a bit tighter than usual, but it works. Back here in the rear, first off, I have quite enough space, I would say, although I also sit a bit squeezed in at the back, feeling somewhat cramped, but that's totally okay. As I said, if the seat is adjusted to the passengers, to the B pillar, then the distance here is okay for a shorter journey as well. What I somehow miss is a central armrest. I always wish for it because I think it's not always a matter of compact class or luxury class, but rather one of convenience. We have, in any case, children isofix attachment points on both the driver's and the passenger's sides, and we also have a very nice back cover.
Of the front seats then here with corresponding pockets here is another compartment, for example, for a smartphone here. You can put the tablet in so it's all nicely done also. A nice fabric, I find everything good door panel in the back is analogous to the door panel in the front. The only thing that might also be a bit sensitive over time is, is simply just this plastic covering here and it might well be that here the the, well, maybe the belt rattles just a little bit, but rest assured, we'll certainly figure that out too. Headroom is also sufficiently ample, so actually there's not really much for me to complain about here. We have a really nice compartment here. You can actually take it out just like this, then potentially use it maybe as a waste bin. I do think that's quite nicely done as well. We have a small compartment here for stowing something, the rear window control, two USB-C ports. So actually everything's pretty cool and yeah, there are no air vents back here, but that's in many compact cars, it might also not be a car where you constantly travel with three, four people. But for the kids in the summer, to keep it nice and fresh in the back and to at least have a vent blowing, that would actually be very cool, wouldn't it? It's genuinely quite practical, to tell the truth. Outside, we've thoroughly shown you everything you need to know, so I guess it's now time for us to hop in and truly get started with the innovative Volvo X30 RWD Extended Range. So, let's not delay any further and start with the remarkable agility, shall we? I couldn't believe my eyes. A turning circle of 10.6 meters, that's really impressive for comparison. A current Mercedes A-Class has 11.20 meters and that's without rear wheel steering. It's quite brilliant, honestly, because the front wheel can turn incredibly sharply, very sharply indeed, with ease. And that's extremely interesting too, because many of you will probably want to use this car in an urban setting and their agility becomes a plus when you need to fit into tight parking spots, navigate through narrow city streets and so on. And what you really could use, especially when attempting parking, is some additional helpful assistance, like with this innovative rear view camera here. It boasts a quite impressive resolution. And just to add on, we've got a notably large and clear display too. I think that's really awesome. As far as I know, it comes standard with this model, plus, of course, the appropriate ultrasonic sensors that can also measure the distance. However, what's missing, and that's exclusive to the Ultra, is the 360-degree camera, which would have given us front and side cameras as well, to help pull out from here. Yes, we'd really like to take you over the cobblestone with us here. And right here, nothing whatsoever makes a rattling or hissing noise, other than perhaps the specific items like sunglasses and a door opener, snugly placed inside the side pocket of the armrest. So here in the door, you know, yes, but otherwise it's quite quiet. Yes, because many of you always write in the comments like, Ollie, don't always rub against some felt or a carpet on the door panel. Yes, sorry, but when it rustles, rattles and hisses on the cobblestones yeah. or when a speed bump doesn't come close. Well, mainly everyone gets annoyed. No one's exempt from that, I believe. Let's discuss the price. Such a Volvo EX30 starts from well over 37,000 euros. Whether that's a lot or a little, I'll leave up to you. What's crucial for me is always how I can lease it and refinance it these days. I once saw on the internet, it apparently starts from just over 259 euros a month, which would be a good price. Wow, rear wheel drive, is that correct? Yeah, that's quite fancy, isn't it? And that obviously puts the $259 a month pricing in a somewhat larger perspective when compared against the very high gross list price, doesn't it? True, though saying it's a high gross list price is only accurate insofar as many other manufacturers also have high gross list prices. What's the competitive landscape? Obviously smart, hashtag one, hashtag three. Um, from our own lineup and then in combination with the Secret X, which is intended to move more into the premium segment. Then we have MG4, of course. Um, we've thoroughly covered it here on the channel for you, the base model and the X-Power with all-wheel drive and 435 horsepower. Feel free to check that out if you're interested in it and maybe also consider checking the ID3 even though it's a bit larger. So actually the Volvo X30 um, might even be a little insider tip, right? That for sure, um, um, we're driving our favorite curvy country road route, you know, the one from Hohenziritz Castle. Starts with a sharp left turn and it handles that smoothly. You can also adjust the steering, whether you want it soft, medium or firm. I chose a really firm one, so it definitely wouldn't be too soft. And I genuinely have to say, it truly cuts through the curves quite impressively well here. What I really do notice though, is that the suspension definitely has a certain undeniable basic stiffness and it unmistakably does kind of push through bumps, edges, manholes, right? It does pick up on that, yes, that's true. Perhaps we're a bit sensitized to it because of course we show you many luxury vehicles and get spoiled by the fantastic air suspensions. 
which of course eliminate any damping. But here you're really on the move in a sporty, crisp, solid way, aren't you? Absolutely. I learned a, a, a 200 kilowatt, 272 HP, 343 enemies, in my opinion, are sufficient. Of course, those who want more power will find themselves much better off with the twin engine, which features two electric motors and boasts 428 HP. I believe that it's not necessary for everyday use unless, of course, you're constantly in winter regions and want all-wheel drive or perhaps you wish to go off-road uh, or in the mountains. Sure, there are exceptional cases. Otherwise, I must say rear-wheel drive, it makes it breezy. And it's got power. I mean, when you step on the accelerator here, there's an instant response. It has quite the punch. Sometimes I wonder, why don't all electric car manufacturers, just like the big American one has shown, simply put power into their cars like Volvo has done here, right? Yes, of course, it's surely fun. That way everyone can decide for themselves how much they want to push it. Exactly. Um, we want to measure the acceleration with you. Stefan, are you ready? Prepare yourself to go. Initiate the countdown sequence now. Three, two, one, and let's go. Yes, and just like that, away he swiftly goes. 200 kilowatt, 272 horsepower, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. Manual shift now at 6.3. Factory specs are 5.3, but I must say that's decent. Well, we've got, so to speak, I was about to say we don't have mixed tires after all. We've installed all weather tires on this particular vehicle in 19 inches. And of course, we've successfully found a really nice winding road where we'd very much like to test the suspension with you going over the bump here. That is absolutely really awesome. That's truly great. Yeah, indeed it is. It's so much fun. But it does ride a bit stiffer. Yeah, that's max for you. Of course, that's also great for the good old moose test, ensuring we're cruising through with stability. You can see this. It truly is quite enjoyable to step on the accelerator here isn't it it picks up immediately 341 Newton meters of torque are instantly available here too it elegantly smooths out the bumps making it feel like it's gliding that's all solid automotive art and that's something we've come to expect from Volvo right yes now all it needs is to brake well that's something we want to test too there's no one behind us so let's slam on the brakes um, uh, and there it decelerates strongly and we're back on the accelerator well I honestly must say that is most certainly solid craftsmanship a la Volvo Respect and hats off, it's genuinely a true pleasure to drive this car with its remarkable performance. We aim to accurately measure the interior sound with you at 50 km h. 57 to 58 decibels, that's quite a decent value. Um, for a quick comparison, take the VW ID Toy 3. It really is around 61 decibels. Let's now go up to 70 km h. 5960 decibels are really genuinely excellent, aren't they truly? The Volkswagen ID3 is measured at a slightly higher 70 decibels, which is quite remarkable indeed, yes? In just a moment, we will be exploring the use of the cruise control feature quite soon. Please do take a moment to look at these intriguing numbers closely. Sixty-eight, seventy decibels. I must really say that's an excellent value. The ID3 was in the mid seventy decibels. Let's talk about the highly innovative assistance systems we're featuring. We have the adaptive cruise control, equipped with steering and lane keeping assist. It's a seventy zone right here, but unfortunately, it does not have any predictive control system. That means essentially, I am required to manually adjust the speed myself. Even now, when the seventy limit is over and we're accelerating out of here. Um, it doesn't take it as the cruising speed. And that's actually what I personally would wish for, because in truth, it's really just a matter of intricate software, then to also adapt it through the advanced cameras, maybe even to anticipate and possibly predict, because through the detailed navigation data, we always know precisely where there are any stationary speed limits, be it in towns or even in 70 metape zones without fail. And I would just like more support there. You see it here with the steering assist too. It's not as strong as the German premium manufacturers Audi, BMW, Mercedes and Volkswagen um, and it doesn't keep to the middle of the lane as consistently. I also would have wished for much uh, stronger adherence to the line in the middle. Sure. This support might be more intended for the highway where we only have very gentle curves and it will probably work well there. We'll test that in the second video during the consumption maintenance and the charging check. 
but many of you are also increasingly telling me that they use it on country roads across the countryside. I too often find myself driving for approximately an hour to reach the nearest motorway, mostly starting from our place and particularly when there are such long and winding stretches on country roads. Then you truly come to appreciate a good partial autonomous support. Feel free to write in the comments how you see this. Is this just a system for the highway or do you also wish for it in the semi-autonomous area then across the country? When you drive out of town and hit the gas, you'll see 70, 80, 90, 100. That's really just two, three seconds in terms of elasticity in acceleration. And there, I really must praise this power. 200 kilowatt of 272 HP, 343 Newton meters. It really brings joy and fun, even in such a small car. And I never understand why many manufacturers then somehow come around the corner with just 90 kilowatts or 115 kilowatt. Yes, I know it's enough, but you also want to have a bit of, we also need to have some fun, right? Yes, please. One is really having fun. Yes, it's just such an awesome sound, isn't it? Have a look at that deep bass, the immersive surround sound. Really quite good, don't you think? Harman Kardon but also brilliantly implemented. We've had many Harman Kardon systems, but often the bass doesn't quite kick, does it? Yeah. And then this remarkable power, 200 kilowatts zipping right past the tractor. It's simply so incredibly spirited, the Volvo. Stefan mentions we really need to discuss and consider consumption as well, don't we? It's quite a dry topic, isn't it? Yes, but it's our duty to inform. Yes, that's true. So we need to be honest about that too. We've got two consumptions for you. And don't forget, this is a press car. That's occasionally driven a bit harder with the accelerator pedal. We've covered about 47 or 48 kilometers in our comprehensive driving report, according to our measurements, consuming 22.3 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. We've got 11 degrees, 12 degrees outside temperature, nice weather. Um, um, yes, and at 23.57 kilometers, it shows 21.2 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. I do believe, though, if a person truly utilizes urban city traffic, um, then indeed it declines significantly. In the second video, while driving on the highway at 120, 140, 160 km h, will determine the average speeds through the onboard computer. We will prepare a one-third dilution mix, then proceed from the charging station back directly to Neustrelitz. So I'm genuinely, truly very excited and quite curious about just how much more efficient indeed it will be than uh, the performance, right? What's your guess? Yes, well, anything less than reduced consumption would be a surprise now. So let's assume that it really will go down just a bit. So you're not willing to commit. I'm especially excited to hit the 160 mark since we sadly missed it with the twin engine on the Hamburg motorway. Right, we are planning to conduct a test of the voice control feature together with you by saying the phrase, Hey Google! Take us to Munich, to the Viktualienmarkt. Your current location, the historic Viktualienmarkt, is approximately six minutes away from Munich city. And you will see it progresses very smoothly, very swiftly. And of course, he meticulously plans for the installation of appropriate charging stations as well. You also have the option to select, for example, specific charging cards he uses. So he only chooses those charging stations and also specific speed ranges. So this is truly the best of assets, especially when it comes to real time live traffic. I find Google Maps is almost unbeatable at the moment, right? Yes, it's the best. You just have to say it. It's time for the interim conclusion here with the Volvo X30. Um, rear wheel drive with the large battery pack. And I have to say the first impressions, they are actually very, very good. Driving wise, it's genuinely a lot of fun, has a substantial amount of power and energy available at any given time for effective propulsion. We have a good suspension, which sometimes might let through bumps and jolts a bit stiffly. Perhaps it's also due to the 2.65 meter wheelbase to some extent and the slightly higher structure ensuring that we don't allow for significant rolling motion. Yes, um, price as mentioned starting at 37,000 euros for the standard battery. I think about 5,000 more for the extended range. And then again, I believe another 3,000 to 4,000 euros more for the plus package so that we have a test car price with a winter package. Um, 
of 46,000 euros and some change. Obviously, that's not a small amount of money for a car measuring 4.23 meters in length, although it must be said that the competitive environment has similar prices, and ultimately, it's not the gross list price that counts, but rather attractive financing and leasing options there. It starts at around 259 euros I've seen on the internet. And that, I believe, is a good story. And there you might want to, after seeing the consumption drive, perhaps head to your preferred Volvo dealer. There you can find great test drive offers too. I truly believe 24 hours with a charging card where you can thoroughly test and scrutinize the vehicle. Apparently, there are also over 1,000 test cars for test drives at dealerships across Germany. So you will get to experience the distinctive charm of the Volvo X30 quite effortlessly, really. And that brings us to the end of the first part, my friends. We hope you enjoyed this video. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Please check if you're part of the electric drive community. We'd be thrilled if you could support us with a subscription and you definitely won't miss the second video featuring the consumption ride and the charging test. Thank you for watching. Stay healthy and no. see you soon. Yours, Oli. So what I really appreciate, Stefan, is how nicely and simply one can press the button on this panel for the trunk release has integrated right yes it keeps your hands from getting dirty down there if it were under the flap or something yes and it's actually quite accessible too isn't it so it truly is an all-around success i must say